Assalamu alaikum guys welcome back to my youtube channel we are going to discuss about end of thalmitis today and how it differs from pan of thalmitis now the word end of thalmitis is derived from the greek word and if we split it into three parts the word end means interior of thal means i itis means inflammation so it is the inflammation of the interior or the inner coat of the eye now that includes the fluids the aqueous humor the vitreous humor as well as the uveal tract and the retina so this is the basic uh, concept behind the definition of end of thalmitis before starting the video i'm going to show you a brief video and to give you an idea about it then we'll proceed So this is how the end of thalmitis you can see it in the patient and how the patient will present so i just thought you should get a brief idea before we proceed with the video now how it differs from pan of thalmitis in pan of thalmitis it's end of thalmitis plus the orbital contents now the orbital contents can include the fats uh, are of, uh, the fatty layer around the uh, eyeball as well as the all the surrounding structure the tenons capsule the, the, the muscles so if we add them to the end of thalmitis then it becomes pan of thalmitis and this is a brief video about pan of thalmitis Now let's come to the causes of endophthalmitis. It is bacterial in majority of the cases. It can be fungal but majority of the cases it is bacterial. And 90% of the bacteria are gram positive bacteria. 10% are gram negative. Now let's come to the causes of endophthalmitis. Now it can be divided into exogenous and endogenous. Now in exogenous that means that the bacteria are introduced from the outside from any injury or any procedure. So through that injury they can enter the eye and cause inflammation now the first one is traumatic perforating injury now that can include a, a trauma in the form of any a sharp object a knife or anything so the bacteria can be introduced the second one is perforating corneal ulcer the third one is post-op infections now a surgery such as cataract or surgery for glaucoma in which instruments are introduced so through that incision or that area the bacteria can enter the eye now the fourth one is after intravitreal injections we give intravitreal injections such as uh, anti vegf factor anti vegf factor that uh, stops or halts the progression of vascular endothelial growth factors in the cases of diabetic you know, in diabetics there is proliferative uh, the vessels are proliferating in the retina so we have to stop them before it reaches the macula and it deteriorates the vision so we give anti vegf injections so through that injection the bacteria can also enter the eye now let's come to the endogenous factors endogenous factors mean that a bacteria are introduced or they reach the eye through the bloodstream through any infection that has already present in the body uh, you can say sepsis but this is very rare as compared to exogenous infections now let's come to the clinical features see the patient will be in great he'll be in discomfort there will be ocular pain and this is one of the main hallmark or sign uh, of this uh, disease the second one is redness now there will be redness but remember this is conjunctival redness because sclera is not involved in end of thalmitis so this is conjunctival redness there will be lacrimation that is excessive watering there will be photophobia sensitivity to light and on slate lab examination you will see hypopion that will be the the dead cells the layer of uh, dead cell white blood cells in the interior chamber on the lower aspect so this will also be present and the vision will be affected there will be moderate to severe vision loss if not treated on time now if you come to the signs of this the eyelids will be swollen and like i said the conjunctiva there will be redness of conjunctiva chemosis and the cornea becomes hazy 
they will be exuded in the interior chamber that is known as hypopion this is the hallmark of this uh, disease there will be vitreous exudation and there will be rise of intraocular pressure in the early stages but when the ciliary processes are destroyed the processes are destroyed it will result in fall in intraocular pressure in the later stages now the diagnosis is mainly we rely on the clinical features when the patient presents with these symptoms about 90% of our diagnosis is confirmed we go for end of thalamitis we start the treatment but if you want to confirm it we can take culture swabs from conjunctiva or the aqueous or the vitreous by various methods to confirm it but we don't usually wait for that we start the treatment and we can on the same time we can take the samples and let the results come whenever they uh, whenever they come now the complications of this is that the first one is as we compared in the beginning of this video to pan of thalmitis if we do not treat it on time it can involve the surrounding the surrounding orbital contents and it can cause pan of thalmitis other than this it can cause complete loss of vision and these are the mainly two or three complications of this disease now the treatment is antibiotics since it's a bacterial infection we can treat it with antibiotics if started on time now we give intravitreal antibiotics that is introduction of the bacteria to the vitreous intravitreous you know, into the eye now we can inject vancomycin cephalosporins amikacin it depends on what type of bacteria is present usually these are administered because the gram positive bacteria are present in 90% of cases and these covers it all up also they also cover the gram negative bacteria so these are the most commonly used antibiotics in these diseases or we can give anterior subtenon injections for 5 to 7 days you know there's an area in the eye we call the tenon capsule so below that in the anterior part we can give the injections the antibiotic for 5 to 7 days that also cures the sub or we can give topical therapy that is through eye drops into the eye but like i said this is a very serious disease with serious complications so we start with intravitreous on first priority so guys this was all for today i hope you got the concept behind end of thermitis pan of thermitis if there's anything in your mind that i haven't covered please do comment and i will try to answer them until my next video guys take care